This is a uh, remote condenser to an ice machine. I don't know that the speaker's gonna get it. I can hear the front bearings of this motor grinding. That motor's not supposed to sound like that. There's a grinding in the front bearings. So in the heat of the summer, that grinding of that bearings is gonna overheat. Uh, we'll get in there and pull an amp draw and I bet it's a little high. All right, so this is our remote condenser to a cake freezer, master built. Um, they said it's terminal, been diagnosed as esta muerto. Well, this is dead. Fan motor is definitely shot. This is alarming to me because assuming the person who was here knew what he was doing, this compressor is definitely no good. There's a note that says new compressor 2010. So uh, let me check the calendar. It's uh, 2023, so yeah, maybe. I don't think this is a 2010 compressor though. I can run it through Copeland and find out. Well, let's test everything to ground. Can confirm. So I'm ohming it out first. It's three phase, so right? So three phase ohming out, all the windings should read the same from an ohms perspective. So we got 55 ohms there. We got nothing there. And we got nothing there. So that winding is closed or is uh, open. So can confirm this compressor esta muerto won't run so i kind of get it these are stupid expensive compressors too so you need this compressor you need this fan motor um you know at this point they've just left everything opened up so no doubt you what makes sense is to just quote the whole thing place the whole unit yeah I'm gonna get with the parts guys and find out for sure get some prices I mean because a new unit I don't know I don't even want to guess yet I mean I can definitely part it out cheaper and we can get a new unit but all right this is the partner freezer the cake freezer that's dead upstairs with the bad compressor. So, I mean, I can see why. Obviously, you've got the train line heater is no good. Your pan is broke, so you need a new coupler to attach that, which I can do. That's no problem. Um, but yeah, you just start piling up the the O nos, right? It's like, well, now we need. New heaters. You know, do the fans work? Uh, the compressor disconnected up top. I could actually fire this up and see. But, yeah, I mean, the coils don't look terrible. Doesn't mean there's not a leak somewhere, but the coils look good. So I wouldn't jump to, hey, you need to replace the whole thing necessarily. I'm going to give them an honest quote. Um, I can get that compressor. It's Friday. They, I mean, I can have that compressor in hand by Monday. So, but I mean, it's a lot going on. I mean, we've got a controller. I'm trying to look in at the electrical section without taking it all. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, definitely a massive project. But cost and timeline on replacement is what, right? For remote condensing, double door freezer, master build's done. So now you've got to get a global. That's what uh, Dairy Queen is down with now. They'll get a global and they'll actually recommend a self-contained. So you have the compressor down here putting heat out into the dining room, which is terrible. And that thing will probably cost eight grand. 
shoot them from the hip. But if they do that, it's plug and play, wheel this one out, wheel the new one in, you know, measure the space and that's, that's it. If we do the remote condenser um, rebuild, then there's a lot of labor, right? I mean, I've got the cost of the compressor, which is gonna be a couple grand. Uh, the incidentals of the Freon, we have the motor on the roof. So, I mean, you're gonna have, let's just pretend you have $3,000 in materials and it takes me a day to do it. You know, now you're gonna spend half the cost of a new one. Now the question is timeline. If they've been down to one freezer this whole time anyway, it might not matter. So it might, might make sense for them to order it and wait and then just easy out, easy in. And at least then all of your dollars are put into not extensive labor and uh, a new piece of equipment as opposed to an old one that who knows what's yet to come. Just whatever, just thinking it out with you. So here we are, cake freezer. Frame rate's funny, the fans are spinning proper, but look at this. power that's just blowing up compared to the others. I got nothing at any of those connections except that one right there. It's not a temperature, it's not super hot from a temperature perspective, right? But in relation to everything else, it's glowing. Good enough for me. You can see it's actually the wires discolored. It's satisfying to pump it down right now. So this will kick out. We'll get a better view of the inside of the contactor. Which I know you're shocked to know I'm going to change. I uh, will check these as well just to make sure. Come on, pop out, you rascal. Forty microfarad capacitor. Plus or minus six percent. Rut row. Again, I'm no math whiz, but let's turn that into ten percent, because that's easy math. If it was forty plus or minus ten percent, then we could be down up to four, so we should be 36. So if it was less than 36, it would have a 10% allowance. It only has a 6% allowance, which means it's gonna be, you know, again, turn it into five. So now you can lose two. You should be at 38. Realistically, if you punch it in, some number head will do it. It should be like 37.6, blah, blah, blah. But uh, 35, no bueno. That 40's gotta go. 145 to 177, that'll work. New 40 amp contactor, new 40 microfarad capacitor. Burned up, always. And for those who thought that that wire, because it wasn't a uh, high temp, wasn't a problem, look now. No evidence of it at all. It wasn't getting a good connection on the north side of that terminal. That one right there. These clears, man, they will really help back you up on your preventative maintenance. You can show people, look, that wire's melting. In the middle of the summer, that wire's going to Junk out, your unit's going down. Also, how often do you see this out there? I see it all the time. I mean, I'm in North Georgia. There's no disconnect for this unit up here. Legally, I have to have a service disconnect within six feet of the unit. So they changed their filters, but you can see and that's 
it's actually not a bad day at all for them. It's in pretty good shape with this stuff. They've got some painful ones though. Two of those three condenser fans are pulling right at amps and they're uh, factory original from 2015. That blower motor's got a front bearing seal that is just shot. It sounds terrible and that's expensive motor, so that sucks. Uh, the cake freezer condensing unit, I really don't think we're gonna fix. Uh, I, I feel like it's gonna make sense to purchase a new one, but I'm gonna quote them whatever's. Uh, new relay here. Condenser fan motor relay is overheating because two of the three fans are pulling more amps or at right at amp load. Belts, filters, that's normal stuff. Belts for both of these. And I replaced the contactors in there. And uh, the other, yeah, the other cake machine also. Over there, that's what we were just changing the contactor and 40 microfarad capacitor, but. And uh, both of these need disconnects, which you can see, I, and that's how I'm gonna do it. I don't have to put a fancy disconnect. I can just put a waterproof outlet and cover with a physical switch. Uh, I mean, it's just a 240 switch. So I can just put the electrical box is running in right there anyway. So I'll just put a box there, a box on the back one with a physical switch so that I can turn it down. I couldn't check the capacitors in these fan motors because I can't power them down from up here. Um, and I know that fan motor has a bad bearing as well, which you heard earlier, but this one's pretty and new. Hmm. Fancy. All right, goodbye for real this time.